The King's champion, Sir Daniel Fortescue, led the militia in the battle against this unholy horde. Songs are still sung of how he spearheaded the charge. Yeah, I doubt that. So I decided to pick up the medieval game and give it a try. And after finishing it, I decided I'm going to make a review video of it. Mostly because I'm lonely and bored, like an orphan on a family road trip. Medieval is actually a game that was originally released on the PS1 back in October of 1998. So yes, this is a game that was made in the 1900s. And that's a sentence that has made a few people watching this feel old. The game was developed by SCE Cambridge Studio and was published by Sony Computer Entertainment. The game sold fairly well and had decent scores across the scoreboard ranging around 7 out of 10 to 8 out of 10, resulting in it being a cult classic. It would even go on to have its own sequel called Medieval 2, but today we're going to be talking about the remake for the PS4. This version was released in 2019, and this version of the game was developed by Other Ocean Emeryville, and again published by Shoney Interactive Entertainment. For those who don't know what this game is, it is a hack and slash adventure game where you play as a undead knight known as Sir Daniel Fortescue, an evil villain by the name of Zorak. Bloody hell, that's a face only a mother can fix with a brick. Has decided to make another attempt to try to take over everything, and in doing so has resurrected Sir Daniel. And as you see at Sir Daniel's physique, he has lost quite a bit of weight. Who would have thought that an arrow to the head would have been the best dietary plan? Now here's a little backstory on Sir Daniel and Zorak. Turns out Zorak used to be the king's gesture 500 years ago, but was kicked out of the kingdom for dabbling in necromancy. Talk about trying to get some deadlifting in. And then we have the main character, Sir Daniel. As it turns out, Daniel is not exactly a great knight. Back when he was alive with flesh and meat on his bones, he would go around telling the king great stories of achievements that he had done, even though he had never done those achievements. And would go on to receive positions that he did not deserve and did not earn. Which is how he managed to land the position of leading the charge against Zorak 500 years ago. And Karma decided to come back to him in the form of an arrow. And as you play the game, you will come across other characters who know about Sir Daniel's past and will mock him for it. But Sir Daniel is determined to prove himself as a knight in his second life. The hero of Galomir who fell at the first charge. The fog of war and the shrouds of time conspire to turn the arrow fodder into the savior of the day. But we knows better. Yeah, that's right, Daniel. You tell him. You keep a stiff upper lip. I, uh, stiff upper tooth? <laughs> and now let's talk about some changes that they made to the game when going to the PS4. Most notably would be the graphics, and I have to say, this is a very beautiful looking game. I have to say that the gothic cartoonish style that it's going for is very amusing and very easy on the eyes. I found myself exploring every inch of the levels just to see how much work and detail they put into these levels. And I gotta say, I'm not disappointed at all with what I see. And each character, even the enemies in the games, are so full of life and character. None of them are the same and you can easily tell them apart. My personal favorite characters are the Boiler Guards. They're these humanoid boilers that walk around with these musket guns, and they have this nice accent about them. Hurry, comrades, tear this place apart. If we don't find the Shadow Artifact, Lord Zarak will have us mocking out the demons for the next millennium. I think maybe you should take my shield, yeah? It is magic here for this cure. Some say it is better to have a magic sword than a magic shield, but I said to use it, this is rubbish! Who has summoned the Witch of the Forest? Oh, it is you, Sir Fortescue. Forgive me, my lord. I have never met a real hero. <laughs> But with the better graphics, it does seem to come at a cost. I'm playing this on a standard PS4, and it does seem to want to stay at 30 frames a second for a good bit of the game. And also, depending on what all is going on in the screen, greatly affects it. And I've heard stories that even on the PS4 Pro, it wants to drop down to 30 frames a second a lot of the time. I'm not sure why, but I do know that there are games out there with better graphics than this that manage to maintain a higher frame rate. I just don't know why this particular game is the way that it is when it comes to frame rates. Now, it's not game breaking, but it is noticeable. 
How is it that I have no lungs, but yet I can drown? And now let's talk about the gameplay. Now since this is a hack and slash and adventure game, your equipment is going to be very important to you throughout your entire playthrough. So upgrading and obtaining new items is very important. And in this game you can achieve new items and upgrades by collecting chalices. There's a chalice in each level, but you don't get it immediately when you find it. You have to collect enough enemy souls for the chalice to be filled for it to become obtainable. And there will be levels where there are good civilians that you cannot hurt, even though they try to take you out. Sounds like a Karen's dream come true. Starting off, you're just going to have your basic standard weapons, then you will start to receive enchanted weapons that deal more power and have much greater range. For example, you got the enchanted sword, which is just a straight upgrade to your standard sword, but it drains power 1% every second. So it's not something that's game breaking, and you do have to be strategic about it instead of draining it all at once. And then after this sword, there is a more powerful magic sword which never drains and really helps out in the end game. Then you've got your different shields that can handle different amounts of damage. And then you got your ranged weapons which start off with the throwing knives and the crossbow. And then later you go up to a magic bow and a magic fire bow. And then that even gets topped out by the thunder gauntlet. And only a few of these items are really needed to progress, so you don't have to go about collecting all the chalices, but it's a really good idea for you to go ahead and collect all these so that way you have a much smoother playthrough. Seems like Sir Daniel stores all that stress in his head. Despite all that's been changed to it, which is mostly the graphics, I recommend it. It's not a perfect game, but it's a fun game nonetheless. Yeah, it might be a 7 out of 10, but it's a game that's got its own character, style, and attitude about it. If you're someone who just likes to play video games to waste time or have fun, I recommend it. If you're someone who likes going on nostalgia trips, I highly recommend it. Because this game is basically just a exact copy of the original. Just with graphic updates and a few secrets added here and there. And if you do complete a certain amount of stuff in the game, you do unlock the original PS1 version of Medieval. Though I have to correct myself on that statement, it's not a certain amount, it's if you complete the game 100%. Because they did add this new feature called Lost Souls. After a certain point into the game, you'll start to collect these Lost Souls, and each one has a little mini game that you have to do in a different level for each soul that you collect. And after you complete it up to 100%, you can play the original game in its original glory. And as you can see in my video, you don't have any of the original gameplay going. Why? Because I'm a lazy individual. And also, I didn't realize it at the time of making this video. <laughs> and that's all I have for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If not, destroy me in the comments down below, because I actually do love seeing how creative people get with their insults. <laughs>